Amen. Take your Bibles this morning, turn to 1 Kings chapter 2. 1 Kings chapter 2. We're going to wait to the end of the service to give out our Father's Day thing, so somebody don't let me forget, because I will. What an honor and a privilege it is to be a father. There's a difference, somebody said, coming out of my office, and I agree, between being a father and being a daddy. I'm glad that God has allowed me the responsibility to be a dad, and uh, I take it seriously. But I'm glad I had some good training on how to be a dad. And when I say this, it's no disrespect to my dad. I learned how to do some things right, and I learned how to do some things wrong. Amen? But I'm glad that I had a dad who loved the Lord and who taught me that it was important to love the Lord. If you find your place to 2 Kings chapter 2, if you would please stand for the reading of God's word. If you're able, if you're not, that's okay. 2 Kings chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, says, Now the days of David draw, drew nigh that he would die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thou God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, to, in his commandments, in his judgments, and his testimonies. And it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in, in all that thou dost, and what, whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Father, we pray that you bless the reading of your word. Lord, I thank you for the responsibility and the honor and the privilege to be called a dad and a father. Lord, I thank you that I can call you Father God today because you've adopted me into the family. Lord, I thank you, Lord, and for the opportunity to stand here and preach on this day. Lord, I pray that you're hiding me behind the cross, empty of myself. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, I pray they won't see Brian, but they'll see Jesus. I pray that when we leave this place today, we'll have dads and moms that leave this place feeling like, Lord, that they've been re-energized and recharged with the, with the commands from your word to go out and be better fathers, better moms in this world. Lord, now bless this time. Draw all men and women to yourself. Will you receive praise, honor, and glory for what's said today in Christ's name? Amen. You may be seated. Dads, do we matter? Do dads matter? Yes, we matter. Developing the we we matter because it's it's mine and your responsibility to to to, to develop the next generation. I felt like last week I should have, I, 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 I followed the leadership of the Holy Spirit and I preached what the Lord laid on my heart, but I told Gene, I said, I think I got my Sundays mixed up. I, I was thinking last Sunday should have been Father's Day. It was baby dedication. So today we get to preach to the fathers, but moms, listen. You can glean from the scripture today as well. Men, listen, you don't have to be a father here today to get something from the message. Whether you know it or not, and I say it, and I say it frequently, and I say it often, is, is you're leading somebody regardless if you're a father or not. You're either leading them for the, for the good or for the bad. And so we have a responsibility as men, not just fathers, to develop the next generation. A little girl was sitting in her father's lap. 
and loosen you up a little bit. For I'm not good at telling jokes, but I got a few. A little girl was, was sitting in her father's lap, and, and he was reading her a good night story. And from time to time, she would take her eyes off the, off the story and off her dad and off the book and reach up and just touch his wrinkled cheek. She would alternately feel her own cheek and then his. And finally, she spoke, Daddy, did God make you? Yes, sweetheart, he answered. God made me a long time ago. A few years ago for, for me. Oh, she said, then Daddy, did God make me too? Yes, indeed, honey, he assured her. God made you just a little while ago. Oh, she said, filling her face and then his again. She observed, God's getting better, isn't he? <laughs> My father's old, so old, that when he was in school, history was called current affairs. My dad thinks he wears the trousers in the house or britches or pants. But it's always mom who tells him which pair to put on. Dads, we do matter. No matter what this world tells us and no matter what society tells us, we do matter. There was a TV spe special on, on TV and, and there was a herd of young male elephants. Y'all may have heard this illustration, running wild. They were running over trees. They were fighting each other. They were creating havoc in the environment. They were male elephants gone wild, and experts were trying to, to figure out what had happened. And finally, they noticed that there were no adult males in the herd. They were all teenage elephants that had lost their natural mind. The reason there were no adult male elephants is that the poachers had come in and had killed all them uh, for the ivory uh, to make different things. So it is in an attempt to fix the problem that was going on, the experts flew a group of adult elephants in and dropped them into the herd. And these male elephants, when they were dropped into the herd in the midst of the chaos, they began flapping their ears and, and raising their trunks and making loud sounds. And after a few days of their raising their ears and flapping their, uh, raising their trunks and, and making their sounds, the teenage male elephants calmed down. As long as the teenage male elephants were, were calling their own shots and you had gangs of elephants that, were, that had gone crazy because there was no discipline. But when the adult male elephants was dropped in, they flapped their ears, they raised their trunks, and they made sounds, and they demanded order. We've got some teenage terrorists today because there's no adult male elephants in the midst. we got a generation of adult male elephants, real men who will, we need a generation of, of adult male elephants with real men who will flap their ears, will raise their voice, and will make a difference in their life. In order to calm down a generation who, who doesn't know how to act because they've never seen male elephants act the way they were supposed to. Dads, do we matter? Yes, we matter. We illustrated that by the elephants. They were crazy. They were going chaotic until they had some adult male leadership in their life. The Apostle Paul, <coughs> the Apostle Paul recognized the value of developing the next generation. The Apostle Paul thought it was important, and, and I find it interesting that shortly after Paul left his mentor uh, Barnabas, Paul finds Timothy, another young man, and, and begins to minister to him. He, he carefully selected Timothy to come alongside and work in the ministry. He equipped him for ministry. He invested into him so that he could go out and be successful. Men, it would do us well to follow Paul's example of developing young men, the next generation. 
Paul developed three pastoral epistles. He wrote three pastoral epistles to train young pastors. It's important, men, that we develop the next generation. It's important that we invest into their life. You ask, why is it so important? Listen to this. These statistics are a little bit older, but listen to these statistics for just a moment. I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of them, but I think to develop this message today, it's important that we realize, dads, men, grandfathers, aunt, uncles, we matter in society and we matter in the life of the family, in the life of the church. You ask, why is it so important that men matter? 63% of youth suicides are from homes without fathers. 85% of children with, 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 that exhibit behavior disorders are without fathers. 80% of convicted rapists have grown up in fatherless homes. 71% of teenage school dropouts are from fatherless homes. 75% of all youth in drug abuse centers are from fatherless homes. 70% of juveniles in state institutions come from fatherless homes. 85% of youngsters in prison are from fatherless homes. 70% of teenage pregnancies are from fatherless homes. Dad, you can be in the home and still be absent fatherless homes we have a problem it's called fatherless homes 18.4 million children one in four without a biological step or adopted father at home four times greater to a risk of poverty more likely to have behavior problems two times greater risk of infant mortality more likely to go to prison more likely to commit a crime seven times more likely to become pregnant listen dads our daughters listen I, we're going to be looking at raising sons and daughters today listen raising daughters is important I hope that I'm bringing a superman I might not be able to whoop you, but I'm sure going to try if you mess with her. Amen? That's my baby. And I hope that I did a decent job of raising her to understand what it is for a man to love his wife. Was I perfect? No. But I hope I did enough for her to want to go out and find a man that's going to love her the way I loved her mom and the way that I love her mom. Dads, it's important even with don't abandon your daughter. Don't be so macho that you can't love your daughters. Before doing this was absolutely a terrible thing. I've had my fingernails painted. Amen? I'm pretty sure I had makeup on. Because if my baby come and wanted to do it, daddy was going to let baby do it. Because I was investing into her life and I was letting her know your daddy loves you. But she also knew that her daddy was a man and that he loved her and he was trying to teach her how to be loved. You ask, do dads matter? And the answer is yes, 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 dads matter. Dads matter and we need to get busy developing the next generation because life is short. David says, in 1 Kings, it says in verse 1, Now the days of David draw nigh that he should die. And show thyself, he says, that, I, that he should die. And he charged Solomon's son, I go the way of the earth. Dads, listen. The day's coming where we're not going to be 19 and invincible. The day's coming when we're going to be old, and, or we don't have to be old to necessarily die. We're not going to all, the point is, we're not going to always be here for our children. And if we don't want a bunch of crazy, God, I think we already done passed this point. But if we don't want a bunch of crazy, wild, teenage elephants running around acting chaotic, then we better get busy raising the next generation. We've dropped the ball, by the way. You ask, do dads matter? Yes. David is coming to the end of his life, and, and men, don't waste time because you can't get it back. David is about to have his last father and son conversation. David is about to charge Solomon with his last words. Verse 2, it says, 
I go the way of the earth. Solomon, I'm about to leave you, son. You're going to face battles. You're going to face circumstances. You're going to face things in your life. This is what we need to be telling our children. There's things coming your way. You need to grow up. You're going to grow up. And when you grow up, David's saying to Solomon, you're going to face some stuff that, that you're going to need to be, first of all, strong. Verse 2 says, I go the way of the earth. Be thou strong, therefore. David, you're going to need to be strong. David's telling Solomon, you're going to need to be strong. Men, we need to be telling our boys that you need to be strong. We need to be telling our daughters, you need to be strong. Foot coach John Wooten, anybody know who I'm talking about? Great basketball coach. He says this, physical strength is measured by what one can carry. Spiritual strength is by what one can bear. Wow. Physical strength is what I can pick up and carry. Ain't as much as what it used to be, but I can still pick it up. But spiritual strength is what can get on the back and I can bear. Where did he learn to think like that, dads? In the article I read, it was from his father. He learned to think that way from his father. So let's talk about physical strength for a second. I believe that David was a physically strong man. I believe that, that he taught his boys to be physically strong. And, and I believe Samson was a strong man physically. He demonstrated that in the Bible. And men, we need to teach our children to be strong physically. They need to be strong. We're ruining them by giving them video games and setting them in their room. And they're not developing the muscular structure, boys or girls, to be able to be strong. Our bodies need to be strong. They need to be strong, but we know that David and Samson's physical strength was not enough to stop them from losing some spiritual wars in their life. We need to be physically strong. But the second thing under strong is we need to be spiritually strong. Dads, let me ask you today, how are our children going to become physically and spiritually strong unless we develop them into being spiritually strong? Any of you ever been to a gym? Any of you ever had a personal trainer? When you go to a personal trainer, what do they do? They teach you how to get strong, right? So and as we walk through this Christian life, men... I don't care if you're here today and you're a senior man. I don't care here today if you're a teenage man. Listen, or a young dad or an old dad or an old grandpa or a young grandpa, we need to be training our children to be spiritual strong. If you don't have somebody, listen to me, I'm going to get in your grill for a minute. If you don't have somebody that you're personally mentoring and you personally walking through this life, you got a problem. I thank God for our pastors that we got in this church. And some of them don't want you to call them pastors, but I thank God for you. Every one of you. And you don't know how important you are in my spiritual walk. There's people been giving me some material. There's people giving me stuff. There's people to give me advice that, hey, listen, I'm 53, but I, ain't got, I don't have all the answers. I don't even know the questions, Amen. So I need these guys to come alongside of me and, come and help walk me through this life. And as men, listen women, and as women, we need to be coming alongside our boys and girls, teaching them and developing them how to be strong spiritually. Which brings us to our spiritual strength as men. We need to not just depend on our physical strength. You know, men, men, we like to do this, I'll take care of that, don't we? I, I'll go take care of them, I, I, I'll take care of that. Listen to this verse, men. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Ephesians 6.10. You and I need to be strong in the Lord. Listen, we, we are in a spiritual war, dads. We're in spiritual, spiritual warfare, and my fellow fathers, take the strength of the Lord and use it to your advantage. And dads, 
You have the responsibility for your family. It's your responsibility to make sure your family is spiritually strong. You need to be able to stand against the oppositions that's going to come your way and come your family's way. You see, we're in a war. And there's an enemy that we're facing. And the enemy's on the prowl. The enemy, listen to this verse. Listen to the orders that Peter gives us. And y'all know the verse. And in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There is an enemy in, in men. We have been called by God to stand in the gap and to make sure our family is spiritual strong. We need to be at our post, men. And the reason why we have a generation of young people that don't go to church, the reason why we have a generation of young people that don't care about God, the reason why we have a generation of young people who have no respect for authority is because, men, we haven't taught them to be strong in the Lord. John 10.10 10 says Satan is a thief who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Listen, he wants to destroy your reputations. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your families. And he wants to destroy our church. So we must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not our physical strength. Listen, being a daddy that matters requires you to be a strong spiritual leader. Secondly, I love I hope you still let me be, you pastor. I love what he says next. I go the way of the earth, be thou strong. Therefore, and show thyself a man. I am a in a man. I'm scared to ask. But can anybody tell me what a man is? Obviously, there's some people confused about what a man is and what a woman is. I looked at a picture before I come out here, and I like to got sick. Do you realize? Hey, I don't care. Do y'all realize that the Secretary of Health I don't want this dude in a foxhole with me, Coleman, or in the back seat of my airplane. That's too close for comfort. He ain't even a dude. I don't know what, he, what it is. He's sitting there. Any of you ever seen a woman in, in, a, in a military dress and dress military? I mean, they're, I mean, they're pretty sharp. This whatever it is has got one on. In earrings. And he's an admiral in the United States Army. And, and he's the Secretary of Health in, in, in this administration in the White House. I'm sorry. David says, men, teach your boys to be strong and teach them to be men. Men don't wear dresses. Hate me if you want to. Men don't wear earrings. Nose rings or nipple rings. Men don't wear pantyhose. Men don't wear lipstick. Men don't wear nail polish. Listen, David said, listen, dads, man up. And I say to this generation of men and this generation of the uh, United States of America, it's time to man up. Hollywood for years, for years. I was thinking about MASH. I didn't get to watch much TV. But somebody that's older than me that can tell me about MASH someday, tell me about MASH. Wasn't there a guy on there like I just described? Huh? Clinger, yeah. I don't know what he was clinging to. All right, so he was trying to get out. Praise God, I'm going to break a leg or something. I ain't going to be no... Listen. Listen, Hollywood for years have been conditioning, have been conditioning us for this. They've been trying to weaken the role of man for a long time. They depicted the man as weak 
and not masculine. Daddies, if you have a son, you better teach them what it means to be a man. Nowadays, you better, you better make sure that he, he knows he's a male and there ain't nothing he can do about it. We got men that can't carry an AR, and by the way, they don't stand for assault rifle. We got men who, who can't carry an AR at 18, but we let a five-year-old determine whether or not they want to be a male or a girl. Come on. You say, preacher, you done got too political. No apologies. David says to Solomon, man up. Men, we need to teach young men how to treat women. They're not a punching bag or a kicking bag. They're not your slave. They're your companion that God give you to do life together. You better be teaching your young boys and your young girls how to love their wife, how to love their husband, how to be gentle yet tough as nails. We got too many sissies running around today because daddies hadn't taught their children what it means to be a man because of fatherless homes. We need to teach our young boys what it means to be a man of God. Listen, biblically, manhood is under attack. The church and the world are are in desperate need of godly men. Listen, being a godly man doesn't come natural. Dads, we need to be teaching our sons and our daughters to be godly men and godly women. What are some godly attributes? i got to hurry. Godly attributes. Godly men, pure heart. Teach our children to stay pure. We wouldn't have the problems that we have in our world today if we'd have been teaching young boys and young girls what it means to be pure. All this, all this sexual stuff would, wouldn't even exist if we'd teach our kids to be pure and to keep their self pure and to keep their self holy until marriage. Sharp mind. We need to be teaching our children to be godly men who have a sharp mind devoted to God and not quitters people are quitting the drop of a hat now men we need to be teaching our son that when you st- I taught Brenda this when you start something you don't quit you, you, you endure it to the end and then when the end comes you can quit but you've started it there's a team depending on you and you don't quit to the end listen church Listen to me. We don't quit. There's a team depending on you. Look all around this building today. It's called the church. It's called the church of Christ. It's called the bride of Christ. Everybody in this room is depending on you to make it to the end. And dads, listen, we better be teaching our children not to be quitters. Being a dad that matters requires you to be a man that walks with God. Last, verses 3 and 4. Be faithful. I've already read them. I'm not going to read them again. David charges uh, Timothy. He said, keep the charge of the Lord, thou God. I'll read them. He says, talking about being faithful, to walk in the ways, to keep his statutes, keep his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper. Listen, this is what our goal is for our children, that they may prosper In all that thou dost, and wheresoever thou turnest thyself. He says, and continue in his word, which he spake concerning me, saying that if thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. Look around you this morning, men. We wouldn't need to be teaching our children to be faithful. I don't mean it's disrespectful, but we're an older congregation. One day, some people sitting around us is no longer going to be here. And if we hadn't trained our children to be faithful men of God, David says, walk in my ways so that I never fail to be a king on the throne. We need to be teaching our young boys and our young girls to be faithful to God. 
because we want this church to still be in existence when the Lord comes back. Serving Christ and serving Him well, reaching a lost and dying world. We need to, we need to teach our, young, our children to be faithful to their family. Develop your children to be faithful husbands, faithful friends. Listen, we need to teach our children to be faithful to God. Be mind, be mainly, listen, we need to teach them mainly to be faithful to God. Faithful to his words. Listen, dads, being dads that matter requires you to be a man of God's word and learn what he tells us. I'll close with this illustration as our musicians come, as, as Frank comes. Their satellites are, are often used to show us where the enemy is located. Satellites in space, they're used to show us where the enemy is located. They provide us pictures and perspectives so that it'll keep us from getting ambushed. They provide information that is critical for being victorious in war. Fathers, listen. Fathers are supposed to be like satellites, providing a perspective for their kids in order to keep them from being ambushed by the world. So dads, you do matter. Dads, you are critical to what's going to happen in the future. 